What do you call someone with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. Today, I'm going to recap a 2017 action crime film called Savage Dog. The movie started in Burma in 1959. At that time, Burma was still colonized by the French. However, in the final battle, the French lost and had to leave the region. The power vacuum made Burma a heaven for European and Vietnamese war criminals. There is also Den Din Chan, a forced labor camp led by Steiner, a fugitive from German troops hiding in Burma. One afternoon, a prisoner named Martin Tillman was taken to a small dirty pond. As it turned out, Martin was forced to fight with other prisoners. Martin's fight was easy. With just a few hits, he was able to overthrow his opponent. However, Steiner, who witnessed the fight, ordered his executioner, Rustiniak, to kill Martin's opponent. Rustiniak went down to complete Steiner's orders. After the fight, Martin is taken back to prison escorted by two guards. While passing through a small forest, they ran into Isabel, a village woman who happened to be passing by. Seeing the guards teasing Isabel, Martin was furious. He attacked the guards with a headbutt. When Martin arrived in his cell, which was located on the top floor of a building, Martin found that Isabel actually came to visit and give Steiner flowers every week. A curious Martin immediately asked why Isabel did that, while Steiner didn't even care. Instead of answering, Isabel asked if Martin wanted flowers too. Isabel thinks that Martin is a good person. It can be seen from the way he defends Isabel when the girl is teased by the guards. Isabel felt that Martin didn't deserve to be in prison. Martin didn't respond to Isabel's question. He also did not want to be sent flowers. Meanwhile, in his office, Steiner gets a report from one of his men named Boone about a man who wants to meet him. The guest was Harrison, a police agent from England, who asked Steiner to release Martin. Martin turns out to be a fugitive who is being sought in England for trial. Because Martin is Steiner's source of money and the best fighter, Steiner certainly doesn't want to let Martin go. When Harrison asked about Martin's whereabouts, Steiner replied that there was no prisoner named Martin in the labor camp. Harrison then came out by being escorted by Boone. One afternoon, Martin is taken to Steiner's room, where he is introduced by three of Steiner's confidants. One of them is Rastiniak, who is a former member of the Spanish Special Forces. Then there is Boone, a Special Forces personnel and war hero from Vietnam, who was slandered as a traitor. So he is now the most wanted fugitive in Vietnam. Next up is Amarillo, the old man of the former Berlin fighter who had been exiled in this place. It turned out that Martin would soon be released. However, Steiner believes Martin will not be able to return to the UK because police are after him for the criminal case against him. So Steiner invited Martin to work together to form a strong group. Steiner has a devious plan and he is sure that even if Martin is released, Martin will not be far from the labor camp. However, Martin refused Steiner's offer. He wants to determine his own path in life after leaving the labor camp. Once he is free, Martin doesn't know where to go without the money and paperwork he needs. He then visits Isabel's house where he is introduced to Isabel's stepfather, Valentine. While talking to Valentine, Martin again questioned Isabel's routine of always sending flowers to Steiner. Valentine said that Isabel's biological mother was married to Steiner. However, Steiner accuses Isabel's mother of betraying him. And to make matters worse, Steiner does not recognize Isabel as his biological daughter. Therefore, Isabel sent Steiner flowers regularly so that Steiner would recognize Isabel as his daughter. Valentine invites Martin to work with him at Valentine's bar. Martin agreed and got to work at his bar. Day after day, Martin passed with peace, a feeling he had never felt before. He even started a relationship with Isabel. One night, when Valentine's bar is full of visitors, two diners clash with each other. Valentine then asked Martin to expel them. However, one of them did not accept the expulsion and invited him to fight. Martin easily defeated the man, as well as his men who joined the fight. The next day, the bar is visited by Boone and Restiniak. They tell them that the man Martin beat up last night was one of Steiner's fighters, and now that fighter is out of action due to a serious injury. Steiner holds Martin responsible for replacing the fighter. Martin will even be paid quite expensively if he wins the match. Turns out, Martin turned down Steiner's request because he didn't want to be a fighter. 
Hearing Martin's refusal, Rastiniak threatens Martin by saying that if Martin doesn't cooperate, Steiner and his men will kick out everyone in the bar. After Rastiniak and his men leave, Martin discusses with Valentine. He considers that he brings bad luck to those around him. Valentine suggested that Martin just obey Steiner's request. He allowed Martin to compete in the fight. The next morning, Martin said goodbye and headed straight for Steiner's office. There he was ushered into the battle arena, where many of the patrons had placed bets. Martin began to fight and managed to attack and overthrow the opponent. It turned out that the fight did not stop there. He was immediately asked to face the next fighter and the next again. Martin was able to beat all the fighters and Martin's victory, of course made Steiner's camp get a lot of profits for winning the bet. Back at the bar, where Valentine is approached by Harrison looking for Martin. Harrison told Valentine that Martin was a fugitive because his actions in avenging the deaths of his equal's brother and father in battle had killed several people in England. Harrison also said that anyone who told the whereabouts of Martin will get a prize of 10,000 pounds. Valentine replied that Martin used to work at his bar, but now he had gone somewhere. Valentine said he was not interested in the gifts offered by Harrison and asked him to leave immediately. After the fight, Martin was invited by Steiner to have a drink and chat. Steiner again invites Martin to work with him and make a lot of money with the fights he will arrange with other fighters. Steiner also gave a fairly large fee to Martin for his victory today. One day, Steiner was typing on a typewriter in his office. In the document, he wrote his heart out that he actually admitted that Isabel is his biological daughter. Moreover, Isabel was born to the woman he loved. However, Steiner could not accept the betrayal of Isabel's mother, who cares more about her people instead. Because of that, Steiner no longer wants to admit that Isabel is his biological daughter. Then, Steiner put the letter behind his wedding photo with Isabel's mother. After Martin returns to Valentine's place, he is asked to run away from that place by Valentine. Valentine suggested that Martin and Isabel go to America to start a new life, while Valentine himself will sell his bar and start a new life in Thailand. Martin actually agreed to the plan, but he still needed a lot of money to escape the place. Therefore, he will fight one more time to get a lot of money. Some time later, Martin came to Steiner's place and expressed his intention to fight again in the next match. Steiner explains that no one else wants to fight Martin, especially now that most people want to bet on Martin's win. So Steiner advised Martin to lose in the next fight. Considering Martin needed the money, he agreed to the terms. Long story short, it's time to fight. The people who came to watch were all betting for Martin's win. Because Martin had promised to pretend to lose, he deliberately made his opponent win the match. However, it turns out that Valentine has secretly pledged his bar to participate in the bet on Martin's victory. Hearing Martin lost, Valentine was very shocked. It turned out to be Rastiniak's plan to trap Valentine and take control of the bar. An argument ensued when Rastiniak came to Valentine's bar to kick him out. Isabel, who heard this, questioned how Martin could lose. Amrillo, with Rastiniak's entourage, explained that it was all planned. Isabel couldn't believe what she was hearing. She then slapped Amarillo. Not accepting Isabel's treatment, Amarillo slapped Isabel so hard that the girl fell to the ground. Seeing Isabel being hit, Valentine pulled out his gun. However, Rastiniak quickly took the gun that was in Valentini's hand and immediately shot Valentine and Isabel. Martin, who didn't know anything and had just arrived at the bar, was immediately pointed at by Rastiniak. Then, Rastiniak shot Martin. Realizing that Martin and Isabel are dying, Rastiniak orders his men to bury Martin and Isabel alive. Apparently, after the Rastiniak group left the bar, Martin woke up and was able to get out of the grave. After that, he tried his best to help Isabel. Luckily, Isabel survived. Then Martin entrusted Isabel to the locals, while Martin himself went to train so that his revenge could be avenged. Day and night he trained with determination and willpower, until finally he felt confident that he could defeat Steiner and his gang. One afternoon, Martin visits Valentine's bar, which is now controlled by the Steiner gang. There, Martin toppled one by one Steiner's men who were outside the bar. When Martin came in, he saw Amarillo drinking at the bar. 
Martin attacked all the men in the bar. However, Amarillo managed to escape. Arriving at Steiner's office, Amarillo informed Steiner that Martin had returned. Steiner thought that Martin had come to steal all the money he had accumulated from gambling. So he told Amarillo to move all his money somewhere. With some bodyguards, Amarillo rushed to the cash register to take it. But at this moment, Martin came and attacked them. A shootout ensues between Martin and Amarillo's bodyguards. Martin managed to overthrow all of Amarillo's bodyguards and shot Amarillo in the hand who was busy moving money into the bag. Then, Martin throws a grenade into the cash register and blows it up. Martin didn't take a penny from Steiner's money. In Steiner's office, troops are seen standing guard to welcome Martin's arrival. They readied their weapons for battle, while Martin himself slipped through another door. One by one, Steiner's men managed to be paralyzed, although then, Martin had to shoot successively at several troops that confronted him. He arrived at Steiner's office and came face to face with him. Martin instead chose to take a sword and directly stabbed it into Steiner's stomach. Steiner died instantly. Not long after, Boone entered the office. Seeing Martin who is not holding a gun, Boone challenges Martin to fight with his bare hands. However, it turns out that Boone has a very strong self-defense ability. Several times his attacks can hit Martin. Martin was overwhelmed to face Boone. But when Boone slams Martin's body on the table, Martin immediately picks up his automatic rifle that was lying on the floor and shoots Boone to death. Next, Martin chased after Rastignac. Outside the labor camp, Rastignac was ordering his men to get ready to fight Martin. Automatic rifles have been installed in strategic places to incapacitate Martin. However, Martin managed to knock out Rastignac's men with the automatic rifle he was using. He then entered a house and again incapacitated two of Rastignac's men. Not long after, Rastignac entered the house pointing a gun. Turns out, Martin had also pointed a gun at Rastignac. When the rifle was fired, it turned out that both of their bullets missed. Rastignac fled in a jeep. Meanwhile, Martin took Steiner and Isabel's wedding photos and a letter written by Steiner. He sent the photo and the letter to Isabel. Isabel was so happy when she read the letter. She finally learned that all along, Steiner had recognized Isabel as his biological daughter. Meanwhile, Rastignac hides in the forest. Rastignac struggled to survive because he was disliked by the locals. However, one afternoon, while Rastignac was resting, he learned that his hiding place had been discovered by Martin. But because he was too tired to avoid Martin's pursuit, he challenged Martin to fight with his bare hands. However, in the midst of their fight, Rastignac uses a knife instead and manages to injure Martin. But Martin managed to throw Rastignac's knife with his kick. Martin then attacked Rastignac repeatedly until his enemy fell. Finally, using Rastignac's knife, Martin stabs Rastignac in revenge for killing Valentine. At the end of the film, Martin is visited by Harrison, who will take him to England. However, Martin threatens to kill Harrison if he is brought there. Martin also made a deal with Harrison that made him free from the pursuit of the British police. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.